The Roman civilization was obsessed with the written records and preserving messages. It was typical for a Roman citizen to show their achievements in life, their place in society, and their legacy. Roman emperors were no different. And what better way to assert your authority and show everyone what a great leader you were than show it in on your coins that everyone had in their back pocket? Roman coins contain written and visual messages, and sometimes they are long messages. So long, in fact, not all letters would fit in a coin, so they had to abbreviate them. Let's have a look at some of the most common abbreviations on coins, the connections they have with their visual components, and how to understand what kind of messages they wanted to pass on. These were aimed at literate and illiterate people alike, so both written and visual parts had to work in tandem to pass an easily understandable message. So, you would pick up a coin, you would see someone's image, and be immediately greeted with three very important points. One, this is my name. Two, let me make it very clear I rule over you. And three, I rule over you due to these reasons and these achievements. And these reasons could be very diverse, from I am blessed by the gods, to I'm a skilled ruler, to I have tons of armed men by my side and it would, it would be very unwise for you to mess with me, unless you like swords swing, swinging in your direction, depending on the context. And then we get to the reverse, where we get to point four. This is what I have to tell you. So we have three coins to look at today. Each comes from a different moment in the empire's history. And as we'll see, they send very distinct messages. I could sit here and slowly dictate what imp, caius, og, cos, among other abbreviations mean, but I think it's better we just go over some examples and learn by observation and context. Your own coins will have different legends, so I'll leave a series of links with lists and abbreviations and guides for you to learn, so you can read your own coins later. For now, let's look at the coins we have and let's learn how to put the abbreviations together in context. Let's hop in. First, we have a denarius of Emperor Hadrian, a very common one, minted for four years between 134 and 138 AD. On the obverse, we can see a bare bust of Hadrian and it reads Hadrianus Og Cos 3 P P. We already have three abbrevi abbreviations here. Og Augustus, the title of emperor, cos three, meaning three times consul, and P, P, meaning pater patriae, or father of the nation. And on the reverse, we can read Anona Og. Anona isn't an abbreviation, it refers to the subsidized distribution of grain to the poor citizens of the empire. Hence the figure on the reverse, Amodius, the Roman standardized measure of grain, and Og. Once again, Augustus, the imperial title. So, if we were to write down the entire message of this coin, what would it be? It would probably be, sound like Hadrian, your emperor, elected consul for the third time, father of the nation, brings you, by his own grace, your subsidized wheat. Notice there's no mention of imperial might or military achievements, nor any excessive shows of power. Even if this man was in charge of the most powerful military machine of his time, the empire was, in general, entering very peaceful times, and Hadrian wanted to show how his rulership focused on the well-being of its citizens as well. A very light-hearted message, isn't it? Let's move on to another coin, minted 60 years later, in slightly more turbulent times. It features a young man on the obverse, Emperor Caracalla. And the legend reads M. Aur Anton Caes Pontiff. We've got new abbreviations here to look at. In fact, the entire legend is made of abbreviations. M. Aur Anton stands for Marcus Aurelius Antoninus, Caracalla's proper name. And then we have Caes and Pontiff, meaning Caesar or the heir of the Augustus title of his father at the time. Septimius Severus, and Pontiff, one of the main priests in Rome. Things get curious when we go to the reverse. 
Here's Mars, the god of war, carrying a spear and a trophy of captured enemies, with the legend Marti Ultori, or Mars the Avenger. Geez, that's, that's a bit too much to associate the god of war to a young prince, isn't it? Turns out this is a very intelligent message conveyed by his father. The coin was minted at 198, one year after Septimius Severus defeated Claudius Albinus on a civil war and after a successful campaign against the Parthian Empire. The emperor was at the height of his power, had unmatched mili military might by his side and was sending a very clear message. This is my son and I'm preparing him to be a spitting image of Mars the Avenger. So may anyone who aspires to the throne after my death be warned. Caracalla will be as mighty as I am. This coin is a threat. And it also makes a point on how important it is to understand the history behind the time a coin was minted. Otherwise, we would have a much more shallow interpretation of it. Okay, summing it up, if we wanted to write down the full message of this coin, it would be Marcus Aurelius Antoninus. Caesar and High Priest, Mighty as Mars the Avenger. We jump further on time, to the years 348 to 350. The Empire has barely survived the crisis of the 3rd century, an Emperor's rule with an iron fist. Barbarian incursions are frequent and daring, and civil wars happen much more often. The Empire is split between the two surviving sons of Constantine the Great, Constans and Constantius II. This is a silvered bronze coin, a typical coin someone from the more humble ranks of society would handle daily. These people would have had parents that lived to see the final years of the 3rd century, when generals such as Diocletian took command of the empire and stabilized it by force. Their idea of a ruler was very different to what we've seen on previous coins, and it really shows. On the obverse we can read, D.N. Constantius P.F. Og. We've got three abbreviations here. DN, Dominus Noster, literally meaning Our Lord, Constantius, PF, Pius Felix, Dutiful and Well Fortuned, and Og, Augustus. We have a bust of Constantius wearing a diadem, symbol of royalty, and he's holding the entire world in his hand. Make no mistake, this is not the Senate and the people of Rome anymore. This is, an, this is an autocracy, and the reverse will make the point even clearer. Here we can read Fel Temp Reparatio. We've got two abbreviations, Fel and Temp, meaning Felix Temporum, or the happy times. The restoration of the happy times. It's, it's quite a happy message. Wasn't it for the image of the emperor stepping on two poor captives with their hands bound on their backs? It may all look and sound very controversial, but let us remember the times when these coins were minted. Barbarians were at the gates, the empire was on the defensive, and what the masses wanted was for the emperors to keep the border safe, maintain a stable empire, and keep the barbarians out. That kind of brutal message was what everyone wanted to hear. Alright, summing up the message, our lord Constantius II, dutiful and blessed emperor, restorer of the happy times. And there we have it, three coins minted in different times with very different messages, from the warm and fuzzy messages of Hadrian to the apocalyptic world of Constantius II. What kind of amazing stories your coins have to tell you? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one.